Hey, we're back, and we are going to talk about oikos and ecclesia, those two terms, in Paul's view of households, how the Apostle Paul talks about, uses, works with, describes, theologizes oikos, household, in the New Testament. Church. When I say church, depending on your background, uh, a bunch of things come to mind, a bunch of potential meanings. Maybe I mean a building on a street that is particularly dedicated to a Sunday morning gathering, where, or a Wednesday night or a Sunday night or some day of the week, Saturday gathering, um, where the, the building, the plant. So like we stopped by the church or we went to, we, there was no parking at the church or um, we, are, we store all of the, the Christmas play props uh, in the back of the church. So we think of that building, uh, and teachers will, fr will frequently say the church isn't the building, it's the people. That's super true, uh, and needs some more focus. Uh, sometimes when we say church, we mean um, the Sunday morning meeting itself, like I'm going to go to church. I'm not going to go to the church, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to a meeting, a gathering of people who have in common Jesus and some other stuff. Uh, either Jesus and a particular view about uh, who pre chose who. Did God choose us or do we choose God? Or Jesus and a particular opinion on what kind of worship music is most meaningful. Or they'll have uh, in common Jesus and a particular denominational preference. Or Jesus and their race. Or Jesus and... Um, Jesus and a view of uh, certain spiritual gifts. So you'll have in common Jesus and something else. And then on that basis, you will get together with some people. Uh, and that getting together is called church. Went to church. I, go, I don't go to church there. I go to, I go to that church. I go to the Baptist church. I go to the Presbyterian church. I go to the Pentecostal church. Sometimes uh, we mean a 501c3 tax-exempt religious organization when we say church. Um, we would, we would, uh, like to cater, uh, we'd like to cater the wedding, but the church can't afford those chairs. When we say that, we don't mean all the people together with all their combined money, all the people that go to that Sunday morning meeting in that particular building with their combined money can't afford those chairs. We don't mean that. We mean that there's a 501c3 organization that pe that is called such and such denominational church or first community church or something cool like um like the journey church and it uh this organization when we give our money every week that money goes into a bank account that belongs to a 501c3 tax exempt organization that bank account cannot allocate money for those chairs the church can't afford those chairs we still don't mean the people we mean the 501c3 organization Sometimes we mean the people, uh, and sometimes we mean specific people, like, um, good morning, church. We are gathered here to worship Jesus. We mean these people. When we say church, we are not saying good morning to the wall or the ceiling or to the pews or the chairs or the benches. What we, we mean the people. Sometimes we also mean even more vaguely the people, all of the church. And we, we, and that's often used in a derogatory sense. Like, the church has really failed in her responsibility to reach refugees. The church has really failed in her responsibility to seek racial reconciliation. The church, the church, the church. That we, by that, we, we kind of just mean Jesus people. Um, Jesus people as a social force, as a, as a demographic, right? There's like, there's like a, uh, college-age students as a demographic, or African-Americans as a demographic, or um, Polynesian-Americans as a demographic, or the church as a demographic. We mean it that way. Zero of these meanings are present in the New Testament. 0, 0.00 of them. When Paul says church, he means something really specific, and he uses it three ways. Ekklesia is the Greek word for church, and when Paul uses that word, he means one of three things, okay? 
Ready? Here we go. Sometimes he means the church universal, right? And that's all believers everywhere, all time. All believers everywhere, every when. Right? Everywhere and every when. From the beginning of the church to the last person ever to believe ever, every tribe, nation, kindred, and tongue, for all time, all places, all of us, we're the church universal. Paul talks about the church in those terms. He talks about Jesus' global people as the church. He also narrows it down a little bit and talks about city church. And that's all believers in a given geographic, or ge let's say geopolitical, city. This is kind of interesting. Anytime Paul talks about church, except for one exception, which will be our third category. Anytime Paul talks about church, he always means all the believers in a city. <clears throat> so, and this also happens in Acts, where Paul isn't talking, where it's Luke talking. So this, this was the common understanding of church in the New Testament world. That the church, the, the, the ecclesia, Jesus' ecclesia, was all of Jesus' people in a place, in a geographic place. Uh, let, me, let me build that for you a little bit. So he would, the, we hear about the church at Jerusalem, and the church at Ephesus, and the church at Laodicea, and the church at Smyrna, and the church at Thyatira. And we hear about the church at um, Philippi, and the church of the Thessalonians. Sometimes it's the church, Paul will open a letter to, the church at such-and-so, or the church of so-and-so. Sometimes he'll say, to the saints and the faithful brethren at so-and-so, and then he'll say, you're the church. So all of the saints and the faithful brethren, the believers, at a place or the church at that place. When we talk about regions, uh, both in Acts and in Paul's letters, there's a, when there's a region mentioned like Judea or Crete, where it's region, uh, bigger than a city, smaller than, a, than an empire, um, it's the churches, the churches of Judea or all the churches on Crete. So there's plural, it's plural. Paul thinks that the, there's a, of all the villages in Crete that have a church, they're not the Cretan church. They're the churches on Crete. There's not a Judean church. They're the churches in Judea and the church of Jerusalem. City, one, region, plural. He never breaks that, ever. Others do. And Paul directly countermands that with force. When, when uh, people try to break the church up on race, this happens in Galatia and Ephesus, or even in some of the other churches near Ephesus, um, a Jew Gentile, Paul comes at them really hard and says, this is not gospel. This is not allowed. This was never the plan. God is bringing all things together in one, not in two, not in 20. The church is not a vehicle for us to be really white or really black or really Japanese or really Polynesian or really Southeast Asian. Is it, can we be those things in the church? Yes. Can the church be reduced to those things? Never. Ever. That's a longer video, though. There's another way people tried to break the church up, and we do this too. We're very familiar with this. Um, in, in 1 Corinthians, you'll read Paul, and Paul, Paul's talking to them, and he'll say, okay, some of you say, I like this teacher, and some of you say, I like this other teacher, and some of you say, I like this other teacher. No, I'm of Paul, I'm of Paulus, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Jesus. Um, the same, we do the same thing. I'm of Calvin. I'm of Menno Simmons. I'm of the Pentecostals. I'm of Wickl I'm of uh, uh, Wesley. Uh, I'm a Methodist. I'm a this. I'm a that. They 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 broke up uh, on the basis of teacher. We break up on the basis of teaching. It's the same. It's the same problem. Here's how Paul describes that. He says, when you do that, here's the problem. 
I'm nearly quoting right now. You can read it yourself. First Corinthians 1, 2, and 3. You are fleshly, not spiritual. You are babies, and this is evil. Is Christ divided? He leaves this open question. If Christ isn't divided, if the head's not divided, the body can't be divided. If Christ isn't divided, the church can't be divided. All the saints at Corinth, and there were a lot of them. Paul stayed there a bunch of years. There are a lot of saints at Corinth. All the saints at Corinth are supposed to view themselves as one church and never subdivide. If Paul were to write a letter to the, to the saints in Nashville, he would say, you are one church, and I don't know why you break yourselves up into these little groups where you get to worship your opinion. You get, to, you get to worship Jesus while attempting to love your opinion on a doctrine more than you love a brother or a sister down the road who disagrees with you. If you don't love your brother more than your opinion, you don't love me more than your opinion. This is, this is the statement of Jesus there. And Paul even goes on to say, it's not just that you're carnal and fleshly and babies. It's that you're stuck there. Not only is this, is this division arising out of your infantileness, your, your, your babyhood, it's keeping you stuck there. I can't teach you anything else because you broke yourselves up. You took the glass that was supposed to catch the water of the teaching of Jesus and you broke it into like 40 pieces so you can each have your little piece and put it where you especially like it and you can, you can sing the way you want to sing and you can think the way that you want to think all, all free, completely free of anybody else who has a different opinion but the glass is broken so I can't teach you anything else. You broke my glass. How can I give you anything else? The vessel, the one church that's supposed to catch the life of Jesus, you broke it up so you could all have your special pieces all to yourselves. You're stuck, and I can't help you. This is what Paul says. That's a bad place. That's a bad place. But operationally, like, how can you possibly live as all the saints in a city? Well, he also calls, he refers to the church at so-and-so's house. Church at someone's house, right? And this is households. And that's believing family plus. Remember that it's not uncommon for um, in the early church for households to take in believers to make them kind of part of their household dynamic when their families didn't believe and kind of cast them out. They didn't kind of wander the world without family. They got taken into family. They got taken into Oikos. So instead of the church being a competitor with the family, am I going to spend time with the kids or am I going to go to church? Is the family going to be together? Are we going to go to church? Instead of the church being a competitor with the family or the church being like, we're for families. Everything we do is to make families want to come here and buy our particular brand of Jesus. Instead of either of those fallacies, the church was comprised of oikoi, of households, believing households, networked together with the mission to bring the love and life of Jesus to real life in the cities where they lived. They were a second kingdom, a contrast kingdom. And this is where I want to park for a minute. For Paul, the church was a contrast community. This goes all the way back to an earlier video on, on the Sermon on the Mount. The church was a contrast community. If you look at the church, and if, if someone who had no exposure to church were to look at a, a church, they would say, okay, those people are different. Here's how they're different. The Muslims do religious stuff that way, and the Christians do religious stuff this way, and that's how they're different. That's a meaningless contrast for a person who's irreligious. It, Muslims do it, the Buddhists do it that way, Hindus do it that way, Christians do it that way. We're all free, we all do it however we want. If, you, if however, we live differently as a city church, then in, this, in a city where, where gangs are violent and where race divides, in the church it doesn't, if it actually didn't, if in the church it doesn't, where opinion wasn't king and race wasn't king, but Jesus was, that would provide a meaningful contrast. In a city, in, in societies full of broken families and wrecked extended family networks where Thanksgiving is the worst thing, the worst holiday in the world is to be around a bunch of crazy people. Like in a, in a, in a society like that, if we could provide a contrast for how family works and how family is an open door that includes people that aren't related, that is something everybody has and where everybody hurts. City church and household church provide contrast communities. And that's very important to Paul.